the announcement. Thank you, Beth, for recording. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Janetta. That was gorgeous. <clears throat> so once again, welcome. What announcements do we have today? Bruce? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, there's been a lot of uh, back and forth about what year our church started um, between 1728 and 1730. The Historical Society actually communicated that it was 1730, but I think they're wrong. <laughs> um, we have a, a booklet that was put together in 1955 that we just received on the history that said the Ecclesiastic, <laughs> hard to pronounce, society first met on July 9th, 1728 to form that society, which was the church all the way up till 1947 or so. So um, I think it's 1728, and that's why 1728 is on our sign out front of our church. Um, 
I don't know any of you remember that when that happened back then. That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Is anyone there? No, <laughs> sorry. So I'm sure the board will talk about this more, but it makes a difference because obviously it'll be the year we celebrate our 300th anniversary, which is pretty amazing on top of the 150th anniversary of VIS. Just a couple of uh, rebuild uh, comments. Uh, the interim building inspector for Thompson is coming out to the church this week to meet me and Lynn Smith, the architect. This is a really important meeting because we want to receive from him what we need to fix so that the building can be occupiable. And when it's occupiable, our insurance will be a lot less than it would be with a builder's policy, which can be a lot of money per month. So that's a really important meeting. Uh, we've not heard back on the $500,000. Our which is it's really just the final approval from the paperwork we submitted, but we we should hear back any day this week. And I don't know if I'd communicated this, but Eversource is going to do part of our tax grant, uh, tax credit program. They can only do part of it. Um, Bank Hometown said no, they can't help us. Uh, so we're going to I'm working through another broker to to get um, a corporation or to to work through that. Um, and the last thing is we met with some different folks at Brandy Hill, the Brandy, uh, Brandy Hill repairs are going to be fairly significant. Uh, very little has been done since we took over ownership of Brandy Hill. Um, and the roof line needs to be fixed. Some things, some painting needs to be done. Anything else, Beth? That was, a, there, there's, there's a few holes inside the, the ceiling. Um, so we'll, hopefully we'll talk about that at the annual meeting and vote to approve the funds to fix Brandy Hill to keep it up. And that's it. Great. Thank you. You know, one church I served previously um, had two different dates, too, for the beginning. Um, and it was because they started out with just winter preaching privileges. Um, when you couldn't travel as far to wherever the next closest church. And then eventually they got year round. So just a, a, a thought there. Um, but thank you, Bruce, for all those updates. Um, other announcements? Okay. Well, let's continue then with the <clears throat> call to worship. When our world is a storm of trouble and grief, in worship, we find a time of calm and renewal. We seek the courage of God's word planted deep in our hearts. Let us slow down to hear God's truth for us. When we seek the comfort of God's grace, refreshing our souls, let us remember God's promises to us. When we seek the compassion of God's love, nourishing our lives, let us share God's blessings with those around us. Peter? You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy and all the trees of the field will clap, will clap their hands. All the trees of the field will clap their hands. Trees of the field will clap their hands. Trees of the field will clap their hands. While you go out with joy, you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy, and all the trees of the field will clap, will clap their hands. All the trees of the field will clap their hands. Trees of the field will clap their hands. Trees of the field will clap their hands while you go out with joy as you go out with joy
Thank you. Let us pray. God, we pause today to celebrate the world you created. <clears throat> we are grateful for the many trees in our home state, for the beauty and shade they provide, for the fruit that grow on some, for the turning of the leaves beginning this autumn. May we appreciate your hand in all the world you have made. Give us eyes to see the beauty around us and hearts to turn to you with praise. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now Lauren will bring us our first reading. The first scripture reading today is from Psalm 92, uh, verses 12 to 15. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. In old age, they still produce fruit. They are always green and full of sap, showing that the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Here ends the reading. Thank you. Our second reading is from the Hebrew Bible book of Jeremiah in the 17th chapter, beginning at the fifth verse. Thus says the Lord, cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness, in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. Here ends our scripture. So the last week in August this year, I returned to a favorite place for the first time in five years. The Chautauqua Institution is in far Western New York State. Like you get in your car, you put on the GPS and it says, go 600 miles and turn right. It is uh, very close to Lake Erie and it's actually on Lake Chautauqua. I was there first 13 years ago as part of a, a new clergy program. And I subsequently returned uh, as a new clergy alumni program I was UCC chaplain of the week one year, and I went another couple times with my family. <clears throat> it now spans over 2,000 acres, Chautauqua Institution. It was founded in 1874 as a summer retreat for learning and respite for Methodist Sunday school teachers. But now over 7,500 people are on the grounds on any given day. And over the course of the summer, more than 100,000 people attend some events and programming there. Six days a week, there is wonderful morning worship in this huge 2,000 seat outdoor amphitheater. And there are also daily outdoor interfaith lectures. Chautauqua welcomes guest artists, writers, and musicians. The week I was there this year featured Wynton Marsalis and the Lincoln Center Jazz Orchestra playing with the Chautauqua Youth Orchestra for Wynton Marsalis' symphony called All Rise. They also have their own theater company, dance program, book clubs, day camps for children, and so much more. 
all major Christian denominations have boarding houses there at affordable rates, and there are also private houses for rent and hotels. And in more recent years, uh, Jewish and Muslim communities, as well as other faiths, have a presence there as well. So on my most recent visit, <clears throat> I was truly blessed to hear some remarkable preaching from the Reverend Dr. Otis Moss III. <clears throat> Excuse me. He is pastor of Trinity United Church of Christ in Chicago. He shared some of his thoughts one of the mornings he preached on spiritual lessons from trees, some of which I will pass on to you today, along with some of my own musings. So Reverend Dr. Moss appreciates, as he says, that trees live in community. Redwoods have roots that go down and also connect with one another. He said a stronger tree will send nutrients to a weaker tree to give power to the other one. And an elder tree will pass on food to the younger tree. And this most amazing thing, on the eastern side of the Amazon, the trees block the morning sun, sun coming up from the east, and send a message to the trees on the western side <clears throat> that though it is dark, the sun is coming. Though it is dark, the sun is coming. It's such a powerful metaphor for what we at our best can do for one another, lending our power to those who are presently weaker, offering encouragement that the sun is coming to those who need to be reminded perhaps that better times are coming. The people of Judah who remained in Jerusalem after many of their friends and family members were exiled to Babylon needed just such encouragement. And the prophet Jeremiah who remained there to help them rebuild their lives in Jerusalem offered just such encouragement as a conduit of God's message of hope. He said, blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like tree planted by the water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious and it does not cease to bear fruit. It shall not fear when the heat comes and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious and it does not cease to bear fruit. And so Moss asked, did you ever see an apple tree eat its own fruit? We bear fruit best when we are healthy and rooted in God. And when we do so, not for ourselves but for others. And just as we are bearing fruit for others, the trees can feed us with their beauty. This time of year, when we see the leaves beginning to turn, we may look up a bit more often to appreciate them. I'm reminded of a poet by the well-known chronicler of nature, Mary Oliver. When I am among the trees, especially the willows and the honey locusts, equally the beech, the oaks and the pines, they give off such hints of gladness. I would almost say they save me daily. I am so distant from the hope of myself in which I have goodness and discernment and never hurry through the world, but walk slowly and bow often. Around me, the trees stir in their leaves and call out, stay a while. The light flows from their branches and they call again. It's simple, they say, and you too, 
have come into the world to do this, to go easy, to be filled with light and to shine. It's simple, they say, you too have come into the world to do this, to go easy, to be filled with light and to shine. When we do this, we can connect to our rooted faith and our belief that God has created this beautiful world and called it very good. Even in troubled, worrisome times, the trees remind us that they put off oxygen that we breathe, along with moisture that we drink into ourselves. They are useful and beautiful, connected and godly. I'll end with a poem written originally in Portuguese by Alberto de Viega Simões. The most common version of the poem appears on a series of carved signs across the length and breadth of the forests of the United States. The translation is usually unattributed and the poem is written from the point of view of the forest itself. I am the heat of your hearth on cold winter nights the friendly shade screening you from the summer sun. And my fruits are refreshing drafts, quenching your thirst as you journey on. I am the beam that holds your house, the board of your table, the bed on which you lie and the timber that builds your boat. I am the handle of your hoe, the door of your homestead, the wood of your cradle and the shell of your coffin. I am the bread of kindness and the flower of beauty. You who pass by, listen to my prayer. Harm me not. Thank you, God, for this reminder of your creative and life-giving power. May we notice the trees today, and may we be thankful. Amen. Glory, hallelujah, I shall not be moved. Anchored in Jehovah, I shall not be moved. Just like the tree that's planted in the waters. I will not be moved. In his love abiding, I shall not be moved. And in him confiding, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Like a tree that's planted by the water. I shall not be moved. Though all hell assail me, I shall not be moved. Jesus will not fail me, I shall not be moved. It's like a tree that's planted by the water. I shall not be moved. Though the tempest rages, I shall not be moved. On the rock of ages, I shall not be moved, just like a tree that's planted by the water. I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved, just like the tree planted by the water. I shall not be moved.
Thank you. That was perfect.